a remarkable discovery, fragments of a biblical scroll, along with other relics, have been unearthed in desert caves in Israel. These ancient texts hold immense significance, as they date back to a time when a substantial portion of the Old and New Testaments had been omitted. This raises questions about the completeness of the Bible and the possibility of hidden truths intentionally excluded from the Holy Book. Explorations into this long-lost forbidden knowledge have led researchers and believers to uncover chilling and jaw-dropping revelations. One of the most controversial texts is the Book of Judith, which has been the subject of widespread conspiracies and heated arguments for centuries. In this article, we will delve into the contents of the Book of Judith, exploring its nature, controversies, and its absence from the modern Christian Bible. The Book of Judith, a deuterocanonical book, included in the Septuagint and the Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Christian Old Testament, does not find a place in the Hebrew canon, making it an apocrypha. The book tells the inspiring story of Judith, a virtuous Jewish widow, who uses her beauty and charm to save her hometown of Bethulia from destruction. By killing a significant enemy who had besieged her city, she ensures the safety of Jerusalem as well. However, despite its detailed accounts shedding light on the events of Judith's era and highlighting heroism, the book does not find acceptance in the modern Christian Bible due to its nature and contents on seduction. Many scholars do not even consider it to be divinely inspired. The language in which the book of Judith was originally written remains uncertain. It is unclear whether it was originally composed in Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. The oldest existing version is a Greek translation known as the Septuagint. However, the presence of numerous Hebraisms in the text suggests that it was likely written in a Semitic language rather than Greek. Jerome, the translator of the Vulgate, believed the book was written in the Chaldean language. His translation was based on an Aramaic manuscript, but certain passages that he could not understand were omitted, leading to a shorter translation. Unfortunately, the Aramaic manuscript used by Jerome has been lost. The authorship of the Book of Judith is still a matter of debate. While it is agreed that the author was likely Jewish, there is no evidence to suggest that the book was ever considered authoritative or suitable for canonization by any Jewish group. It is not found in the Masoretic text of the Hebrew Bible, the Scrolls of the Dead Sea, or early Rabbinic literature. Jerome included it among the Apocrypha in his Latin translation, the Vulgate. However, Protestants reject the canonization of the Book of Judith, accepting only the books found in the Jewish canon as the Old Testament. Martin Luther regarded the book as an allegory rather than scripture, but it is listed as the first of the eight writings in his Apocrypha. The story of Judith centers around a daring and beautiful Jewish widow named Judith, who becomes upset with her countrymen for not trusting God to deliver them from foreign conquerors. She goes to the camp of the enemy general, Holofernes, and gains his trust by promising to provide him with information about the Israelites. Eventually, she kills Holofernes while he lies drunk, takes his head back to her people, and saves Jerusalem from destruction. Despite having many suitors, Judith remains unmarried for the rest of her life. The book can be divided into two parts. The first part, chapters 1 and 7, describes the rise of the threat to Israel led by the evil king Nebuchadnezzar and his general, Holofernes. The second part, chapters 8 minus 16, introduces Judith and focuses on her heroic actions to save her people. The second half emphasizes Judith's strength of character and concludes with a dramatic beheading scene. The book of Judith remains a fascinating and controversial text, excluded from the modern Christian Bible due to its themes of seduction and its absence from the Hebrew canon. While some view it as an imaginative and fictionalized romance, others appreciate its artistic construction and compositional symmetries. The debates surrounding its origins, language, 
and canonicity continue to intrigue scholars and believers alike. Whether one sees the book of Judith as informative, entertaining, or both, it serves as a reminder of the complexity and diversity of ancient biblical texts and the ongoing quest for a deeper understanding of religious history. The book of Judith is a captivating narrative that contains a story of balance and counterbalance, conveying a powerful message about the reliance of God's people on the covenant. Throughout the chapters, the main character, Judith, emerges as a central figure, despite not being mentioned in the story's first half. In the opening chapters, the divine sovereignty of God over Israel clashes with the political sovereignty of Nebuchadnezzar, who commands the Assyrian armies. Under Nebuchadnezzar's command, his chief general, Holofernes, leads a massive force in a campaign against various nations, including Israel. However, the people of Israel, led by the little town of Bethulia strategically positioned on the route to Jerusalem, decide to stand up against Holofernes' advancement. Despite warnings from Aor the Ammonite that the Jews cannot be conquered unless they sin against their god, Holofernes lays siege to Bethulia, ruthlessly cutting off its water supply. After 34 days, the people of Bethulia reach their limits and are ready to surrender, even if it means worshipping Nebuchadnezzar. It seems as though God has forsaken them. However, Uzziah, the town magistrate, proposes a compromise, asking for an additional five days to give God the opportunity to deliver them. This temporary postponement reflects the people's struggle with the impending apostasy, slavery, and destruction of Jerusalem's sanctuary and the entire city. In the second part of the book, Judith, a pious widow in Bethulia, enters the scene dramatically. She disagrees with Uzziah and challenges the five-day compromise that places conditions on God's sovereignty. Judith is a stubborn and determined character who takes center stage and leaves a lasting impact on every scene. She berates the town magistrates, Uzziah, Shabri, and Sharmais, for putting themselves in the place of God, emphasizing that God is testing them and has the power to help them whenever he wills. Judith proposes that they wait for deliverance, urging them to call upon God together, assuring them that he will listen if he is disposed to do so. She firmly believes that since they worship no other god, Israel will not be disdained, even if captured by the Assyrians, as it would result in the desolation of the temple and their way of life. Judith sets an example for her kindred, urging them not to bind the purposes of the Lord. Judith's convincing power is evident as Uzziah acknowledges the truth in her words. The problem of thirst among the people leads the magistrates to believe that Judah's prayers for rain would be the most helpful. Action Uzziah hopes that God will send water and save the people from dehydration, thereby preventing him from losing face by fulfilling his foolish vow to hand over the town to the Assyrians in five days. He blames the people for forcing him into this oath, victimizing them in a similar manner to Jephthah, in the book of Judges, observing the disposition of the town's magistrates, Judith abandons her initial idea of setting an example together with them. Instead, she decides to act alone, promising something unbelievable, that the Lord will deliver Israel through her hand before the five days of the compromise end. While she refuses to disclose her plans, she calls for the people to meet her at the town gate that evening. Judith pledges to do something that will be remembered by all generations. Before carrying out her plan, Judith prostrates herself and cries out to God for the strength to be like Simeon, who avenged the violation of his sister Dina. She implores God to hear her widow's prayer and acknowledges his complete knowledge of the past, present, and future. Judith beseeches God to see the enemy's pride, calling for his fury to be unleashed upon them. She asks for a widow's strong hand to strike down the enemy, employing the deceit of her lips to crush their arrogance. Judith's actions challenge the traditional gender roles in an androcentric setting, where it is considered a dishonor for a male to die at the hands of a female. 
Her determination and courage shine through as she takes matters into her own hands. After finishing her prayer, Judith adorns herself beautifully to capture the attention of any men who may see her. She takes ritually pure foods to eat before heading out with her maid to the enemy's camp. In the Assyrian camp, Judith encounters a soldier on patrol and tells her first lie, claiming to be a daughter of the Hebrews fleeing from them, as they are about to be handed over to the Assyrians for destruction. She says she is on her way to see Holofernes, the commander of the Assyrian army, to provide him with a true report. The soldier, captivated by her words and beauty, chooses 100 men from their ranks to assist her in reaching Holofernes' tent. The Book of Judith, a captivating tale of faith and courage, introduces readers to a remarkable heroine who saves her people from impending doom. Judith, a devout worshiper of God, embarks on a perilous mission to deceive and ultimately slay the Assyrian general, Holofernes. Her story is filled with twists and turns, as she navigates a treacherous path to accomplish her goal. However, despite its popularity, the Book of Judith did not find its place in the biblical canon, raising questions about its historical authenticity and the reasons behind its exclusion. In this article, we delve into the narrative of Judith, explore the similarities and differences between her story and that of Esther, and examine the controversies surrounding the book's inclusion in the Bible. In chapter 10, 14-17, Judith arrives before Holofernes and prostrates herself, portraying an act of submission. Holofernes, caught up in his own lies, claims to have never harmed anyone who chose to serve Nebuchadnezzar, conveniently forgetting the destruction of shrines and sacred places of other peoples. Judith, however, is prepared and skilled in her address to Holofernes, using the term Lord ambiguously. While Holofernes perceives it as deference to himself, Judith intends it as a reference to God. She vows to tell him only the truth and proposes a plan involving her nightly prayers in the valley, where God will guide her actions and reveal the sins of the people of Bethulia, enabling Holofernes to attack safely. Holofernes is pleased by Judith's proposal and is captivated by her beauty and speech, even pledging to adopt her God as his own. In chapter 1123, Judith declares that if Holofernes keeps his word, her God shall be his God, and he shall live in the palace of King Nebuchadnezzar. Several days later, after Holofernes indulges in food and drink, Judith seizes the opportunity to carry out her plan. In chapter 13, 4-10, she prays for God's help, then takes hold of Holofernes' sword and strikes his neck twice, severing his head. Judith entrusts the head to her maid, who places it in a food bag, and the two women successfully escape from the camp. As Judith and her maid approach Bethulia, the people run to welcome them. In chapter 13, 15-18, Judith displays Holofernes' head, recounting how God protected her from committing any sinful act. The people are filled with awe and proceed to bless God. Uzziah, one of the leaders, praises Judith as the most blessed woman on earth, exalting her for her faith and courage. In chapter 14, Judith instructs the people to wait until daybreak before attacking the Assyrians. When Aeor, an Ammonite, verifies the identity of Holofernes' head, he faints but eventually blesses Judith and embraces God's truth, leading to his circumcision. The book of Judith's omission from the biblical canon raises intriguing questions about its status and acceptance. Comparisons are drawn between Judith and Esther, both heroines who saved their people but achieved it through different means. Esther's inclusion in the Bible, while initially disputed due to the absence of explicit references to God, was ultimately decided based on its popularity. In contrast, Judith's exclusion stems from concerns regarding its historical accuracy. Scholars have long debated the historicity of Judith's account. The book's author provides a specific historical context, dating the events during the reign of Nebuchadnezzar. However, inconsistencies arise when examining the timeline and geographical references, 
The city of Bethulia, mentioned as Judith's hometown, lacks archaeological evidence, casting doubt on its existence. Additionally, the book employs a mixture of names from different eras, raising further suspicions about its historical reliability. Furthermore, the Book of Judith contains numerous variant manuscripts, contributing to the challenges of establishing a consistent and reliable version. Despite these controversies, the book's central message of trusting God in challenging times remains powerful and relevant. The story of Judith, a woman of unwavering faith and courage, captivates readers with its thrilling narrative. Although excluded from the biblical canon, the book of Judith continues to intrigue scholars and readers alike. While questions surrounding its historical accuracy persist, its enduring message of trust in God and the empowerment of women resonates. Judith's tale serves as a reminder that God raises whom God chooses to accomplish divine purposes, transcending cultural and historical debates. Whether one views the book of Judith as a historical account or a work of fiction, it remains a testament to the power of faith and the indomitable spirit of those who stand up against injustice. The book of Judith, although not included in the modern-day Bible, has sparked significant debate and controversy. This article aims to explore the controversies surrounding the book, including Judith's use of deception and the perceived contradictions with other biblical accounts. Additionally, we will examine the acceptance and rejection of the book by different religious groups and its significance within Roman Catholicism. Join us as we delve into the intriguing world of the Book of Judith and its complex protagonist. One of the most significant controversies surrounding the Book of Judith is the protagonist's use of lies and deception. Unlike any other figure in biblical history, Judith directly asks God for help in deceiving her enemies. In passages such as Judith 9.10 and 9.13, she petitions God for deceitful words to combat those who threaten Jerusalem and Bethulia. While her intention was to eliminate the enemy, the fact remains that she achieved it through a deliberate lie. This departure from conventional moral standards has led to criticism and raised questions about the book's compatibility with other biblical teachings. Another controversial aspect of the Book of Judith revolves around the seductive nature of its chief protagonist. While some argue that her actions were a one-time occurrence, they conflict with established biblical laws. Some even suggest that Judith attributed lies to God by using his name to support her deceitful actions as seen in chapters 11.16 and 11.19. This portrayal of Judith as a seductress and her alleged manipulation of divine authority have further fueled the controversy surrounding the book. The book of Judith faces criticism for its perceived fictionalized and imaginative nature. While it may excel as a work of art, its departure from the historical record sets it apart from other canonical biblical texts. The book introduces fictional names, places, and references that diverge from the known accounts recorded in the Bible. From the very first verse, which inaccurately connects Nebuchadnezzar with the Assyrians and the city of Nineveh, the book presents contradictions with established biblical narratives. Nebuchadnezzar's rulership over Nineveh conflicts with historical and biblical records, as he was the Babylonian king and not associated with Assyria. These deviations from historical accuracy have contributed to the book's exclusion from the modern-day Bible. The Book of Judith faces mixed reception among different religious groups. Protestants generally reject it as part of the Bible due to the controversies and contradictions it presents. However, the book was accepted as part of the scriptures by the councils of Rome, Hippo, Carthage, and Florence. The Roman Catholic Church eventually declared it canonical in 1546 during the Council of Trent. Additionally, the Eastern Orthodox Church confirmed its acceptance of Judith as inspired scripture in 1672. Within the Catholic Church, Judith holds a significant place, with the character herself considered a strong woman of faith 
and an example for Christians. Judith is even recognized as the patron saint of Catholics in Prussia and Germany, showcasing her importance within Catholicism. The Book of Judith remains a subject of controversy and debate due to its departure from conventional biblical narratives and moral standards. Judith's use of deception, the seductive nature of her character, and the perceived contradictions with established biblical accounts have fueled criticism and led to its exclusion from the modern-day Bible for some religious groups. However, the book's acceptance within the Roman Catholic Church highlights its significance and the value attributed to Judith as a strong woman of faith. The Book of Judith serves as a captivating literary work that continues to intrigue scholars and readers alike.